Hello everyone, uh, my name is Muad al Khalaf and uh, this is uh, uh, my uh, uh, PhD defense uh, presentation. This is an extended version. Uh, uh, my PhD was supervised by Professor uh, Tefik Boltan uh, at the Verification Lab at UCSB. And the dissertation title is Automatic Detection and Repair of Input Validation and Sanitization Bugs. So, let me start by defining the problem scope. So, in this talk, I'm going to show how to detect bugs uh, that are caused by string filtering and manipulation operations in input validation and sanitization code in web applications, and of course, repairing them automatically. So, let me start by defining what a string is. Given an alphabet, uh, which is a set of characters, a string is a finite sequence of alphabet symbols. For example, these are some examples for some alphabets. This is the, there is the English alphabet, which contains the small and capital English uh, letters. There is this alphabet that contains one single symbol, which is A. There is this alphabet that contains two symbols, which is A and B. And there is the ASCII alphabet, which contains 255 <clears throat> sorry, 256 uh, symbols, starting from null, going all the way to 255. So, um, in my presentation, in this talk, most of the talk, I will just consider the alphabet sigma. So let me give you some examples of strings uh, in the, uh, 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 that, you, that are um, that use the characters of the alphabet uh, uh, ASCII. So this is a string, F-O-O, -O, that uses three characters from ASCII uh, alphabet. There is a string that uses some uh, uh, special characters. And this is a string that uses digits. It's important that to understand that this is actually, we look at this as a string, not as a number. So given the English alphabet, here are some strings uh, uh, that are generated from this uh, alphabet. And given this simple alphabet that contains only one character A, here are some strings uh, that contains characters in this alphabet. And this is another one for the uh, alphabet that contains two characters A and B. <coughs> okay, so what are string manipulation operations? There are two types of string manipulation operations. There is concatenation, and in concatenation, you basically take two strings and connect them or concatenate them. So we take one and two, and then we get one, two. It's important to understand that we do not deal with numbers here. We deal with strings. So the result is not three. It is actually one, two. You take foo and bar, and you get foo bar using the concatenation. Second type of uh, operations is the replacement operation. In replacement, you basically, given a string, you replace some characters or a substring by other characters or another substring. For example, this replace operation is going to replace each small a in a string with a capital A. This is another replace operation. It's a special replace operation that deletes the number 2 from the input string. And... Uh, this replace operation deletes by replacing the digit 2, the string 2, with the empty string, or epsilon. This is a library replace operation that does multiple replace operations in parallel at the same time, and it is written by library developers. So if this, uh, uh, function, if this operation gets ABC with small letters as input, it will give you this as output. When we talk about string sanitization, usually we are going to refer to these uh, to replacement operations. Usually the string uh, sanitization in web applications is done using replace operations. Either uh, uh, customized replace operations like this or uh, uh, library replace operations like this. The second type of string operations is string filtering operations. And basically these are the constraints that you find in branch conditions. For example, there is the length constraint. So the strings that satisfy this constraint are uh, the, the strings 
that are of length three characters or less. So this string is going to satisfy this constraint. This string is not going to satisfy this constraint. And notice that the, the filtering operations, they do not change the string. They either accept the string or reject it. This is another filtering operation that matches the input against this regular expression. So basically, it will only the only the strings that contain digits will satisfy this uh, uh, this uh, constraint. For example, this this string is not going to satisfy the constraint because it contains, for example, the letter V, which is not a digit. Finally, this is another <coughs> sorry, this is another uh, um, filtering operation substring. The strings that are going to satisfy this uh, branch condition are strings that have the third and fourth characters as small a capital R. Notice that we start the indexing from zero. This is why we said two. So two up to three, but not including four. So for example, this string, if we start the index zero, uh, the index of letter B is zero, then the index two is a small a and index three is capital R. So this satisfies this constraint. But this string, for example, does not satisfy the constraint. When we talk about input validation in web applications, it is it's done usually using the branch conditions. So it just blocks the inputs without changing them. So why are we considering strings? Because the input to web applications comes as strings. As, as it comes from HTML input fields, like the fields that we see here. Um, even if the field is supposed to give you a number, still you will get it as a string, and then the application, the web application, needs to parse this, this, this string into a number. So let's take a look at how a web application works and how it validates and sanitizes its string inputs. So a user enters an input for example, an email address to this web application, then he clicks the submit. Then on the client side, the input is going to be validated and or sanitized by the JavaScript on the browser on the user's machine. If the input is valid, then a request is generated and sent over the internet to the server side. Now on the server side, again the input is going to be validated and sanitized because a malicious user can actually bypass the client side validation. And then the server side is going to interact with the database and it's going to generate response to the user. So why are we considering web applications? Because web applications are full of bugs. This figure from IBM X-Force report shows that for the past four years, more than 30% of reported vulnerability worldwide come from web applications. And according to the Open Web Application Security Project. The two, the string, uh, uh, the two um, vulnerabilities, cross-site scripting and SQL injection, that are caused by errors in uh, uh, string-related errors in input validation and sanitization code in web applications, are among the top three vulnerabilities that are reported in 2007, 2010, and 2014. So we see that. There are lots, <clears throat> there are very serious bugs and lots of bugs in web applications and vulnerabilities that are caused by improper um, uh, sanitization and validation of string values. So let me give you a simple example of a, um, a validation function, uh, a JavaScript validation function. This example is actually taken from a book to teach JavaScript, a popular book. The problem with this, uh, let, let's first see how the example works and, and then see what the problem is. So the example validates email addresses. It starts by checking if the email address is not empty. If the email address is empty, then the function is going to reject it by returning false. If the email address uh, is not empty, then it's going to be validated against this regular expression. If it does not satisfy this regular expression, then the function is going to <clears throat> return false, meaning that the input is invalid. On the other hand, if it satisfies the regular expression, it, the function is going to return true. So, what is the problem here? The problem here is that if I give an input like this, an email address like this, the email address contains 
are equal and semicolon, which are not allowed in email addresses. Okay, so if I give an input like this, what would happen uh, to the function, to this input by the function? So the function is going to test if the input is empty, and the input is not empty. It's going to match this input, see if it matches this regular expression. The input should not match the regular expression because it's not it's an incorrect email address. But unfortunately, it actually matched the uh, regular expression. So, why? Because the developer write, uh, wrote uh, um, this, this range of characters uh, that contains the alphanumeric characters dot, dash, underscore, and plus. And he only wanted to accept and allow only these characters. But he forgot to escape the dash character. And the dash character is a special character in a character class, meaning that accept all the, all the characters in the ASCII table from dot to underscore, which included the two characters, semicolon and equals. Let's take a, look, a quick look at the ASCII table. So this is the ASCII table. And we can see that this is the dot, and uh, this is the uh, underscore. Well, OK, yeah, here. So from dot to underscore, you actually it actually contains these characters, the semicolon and the equals. So this is the ASCII alphabet. So that is basically the problem with, the, with this example. The question is how can we detect these errors and, how, and uh, cor uh, correct them automatically? The problem is that the actual code is complex. Why? Because the actual code mixes the input validation and sanitization for multiple HTML input fields. But in our case, we want to validate each input field uh, alone. So the second problem is that there are lots of event handling and error reporting code which will uh, uh, complicate our analysis without benefiting it. So let me give you, let me, let's take a look at the actual example. So this is an example that's taken from, uh, <clears throat> this is taken from, the, uh, from Google. And this is the actual one uh, through automatic crawling. So this is the actual example. It contains lots of code and this, it's very hard to verify the whole example. We need to first to find a way to just extract the things that we care about from this example. So, what we are going to do is that we're going to do a modular verification process. The process goes into three phases. In the first phase, which we call the extraction phase, given the web application, we are going to extract sanitizer functions from web application. And I will give the definition of what a sanitizer function is. And then in the second phase, given a sanitizer function, we are going to do string analysis to compute simple representation of the pre and post conditions. And I'm going to explain this later. And then given the results from the string analysis, we are going to use our algorithms for bug detection and report to detect bugs and generate patches. <coughs> um, so this, all this work is, has been published in these uh, papers. I'm not going to go into details on all the uh, techniques that are presented in these papers. I'll try to give uh, um, a high-level overview of uh, some of these uh, techniques and concentrate more on uh, the recent uh, work. So, the first phase is the extraction phase. And in this phase, we want to extract a sanitizer function. What is a sanitizer function? There are actually three types of, of, of uh, input validation and sanitization functions. There is a pure validator. This function takes input and it either rejects the input or accepts it. It does not return the input, uh, it does not, sorry, it does not change the input, it does not modify the input. It just either accepts it or rejects it. There is a pure sanitizer function. <coughs> Excuse me. This function takes an input and then modifies it. The input maybe is malicious, so it modifies it into benign output. It does not block any input. Finally, there is this uh, um, function that's a validating sanitizer. And this function basically mixes the two of them. For some inputs, 
it rejects them because it doesn't make sense to sanitize these inputs. For example, if a user enters his username uh, and in a registration uh, form, then it doesn't make sense to change the username. If the username has problems, then you need to block it. You need to reject it and give an error to the user. On the other hand, the function uh, for other inputs, the function is going to sanitize these inputs. So it is going to change the input into a uh, uh, benign uh, output. So uh, uh, how do we extract? For PHP, we use ex static extraction techniques that are based on uh, Pixie. So for each sync, and what we mean by sync is uh, functions like MySQL query and echo, we extract all the input validation and sanitization operations that are going to apply on all the input fields that flew into this sync. And we do this statically, and what we extract is a dependency graph in terms of implementation. This dependency graph represents the sanitizer function. On the other hand, for JavaScript, since JavaScript is a very dynamic language, and static analysis of JavaScript is hard, and it often uh, we often lose lots of precision, which affects our analysis, <clears throat> we use dynamic extraction for JavaScript. So for each input field, uh, as a, uh, for each HTML input field, we extract all the input validation and sanitization functions that are going sanitize sorry input validation sanitization operations that are going to be applied to this input field all the way to the sync, like for example submit or an, uh, an XML HTTP send. Okay. We do this by running the application and then instrumenting the execution using a, 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 a browser simulator, a, a GUI less browser called HTML unit, and using Rhino for uh, as a JS uh, interpreter. And when we do this, we dynamically track dependencies uh, to do dynamic uh, slicing of the uh, program. So the result of this phase we are going to get a sanitizer function. Let me give you a quick example uh, of uh, what we mean by this. So this is the example from Google, uh, <clears throat> uh, and I think this is uh, this like this is a little bit old, so maybe they they changed the the, the code uh, in the current uh, pages. So anyway, this is a good example to illustrate. So this example contains lots of code that we do not want. Okay. So the validation starts from here, from this function. And then actually what we want is that we want this one because this contains the uh, this is going to contain the value of the input. And then, for example, let's say that we want to extract just the email address. Then we are going to throw out all these cases and just concentrate on this case, case of the email address. And as you see, we do not care about this code. We just care about the code that is in this function. And this function is actually down there. So this is the function, basically. So we are going to extract these things, okay? So this is, for example, the input validation that uh, operation that we are going to, extra, uh, to extract into our uh, function. So basically, the function is going to just contain these operations that are important for us. For us, and we go all the way to the end of the uh, of the validate function itself, which is here. Okay. So that's basically uh, like an overview of what happens in the. Uh, in the uh, extraction phase. And I'm going to stop here and complete uh, uh, in the uh, complete the presentation in a, uh, the next uh, video.